So we're coming to you today um, just to have a conversation in response to the horrible and tragic events that happened at our nation's capital yesterday and that continue to happen all over our country. We don't have anything formal planned, but we did feel a call and a need to, as your pastors, speak into um, the tragic and abhorrent and violent uh, events that have been really caused by the leadership at the highest level in our country. Um, so we're gonna just talk. We're just gonna have a conversation. I know that the last couple of days, 24 hours, it's not even two days yet. <laughs> Um, we've all run the gamut of emotions from, you know, maybe some of us were surprised and maybe some of us said, well, we knew this was going to happen, right? Um, yeah. We've been angry, we've been fearful, we've been grieved, um, and all of those emotions are things that God holds <laughs> yeah. in us and for us. So, um, Steve, I know we texted last night and you said, I'm feeling pretty angry right now. Yes. You want to say yeah. a few words about holy anger and what that looks like? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it's holy anger. Um, I rarely get angry, um, but this is um, probably about the angriest I've, I've been in, in years. Um, to think that, to think that uh, the most powerful person in the world, uh, the President of the United States, would incite um, people to do what they did yesterday. Um, it, it just, it, it breaks my heart. Um, it, it, um, it, it, it's, it's so much, for, for me, it's so much the culmination of the past four years and just this constant, um, the deception and the lies and the abuse of power, um, instilling fear within people, playing on those fears, and, and it just all culminated there with what happened um, yesterday. And then seeing those pictures of legislators cowering under desks and uh, what seemed unimaginable actually happened. Um, and that, uh, that makes me angry and obviously sad. Obviously though. sad. Just yeah. Sad. Yeah. Um, and I, I been praying consistently that God would help to tamp down the anger uh, and help help me us to really be uh, those who can help to keep lifting up the light of Christ's presence mm -hmm. um, through it all. I'm not really through it all. I do deeply trust that God still walks with us. Uh, We'll find a way to bring us through this, uh, but it's a painful journey. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. And I, um, when you texted me that you were angry, and I wasn't in an angry space at the time. I've certainly been all over the the map, right? But it just it really made me think of Jesus, <laughs> and um, when Jesus turned over the tables in the temple. That was really a response to injustice, right? It was a response to um, people exploiting the poor, yeah. you know, in the name of God. Yeah. And Jesus called people a brood of vipers, and Jesus called evil what it was. And I think that, you know, as a church, we remain complicit if we don't call evil what yeah. it is. And if we continue to say, you know, well, everybody just get along, or everybody has a point, there's a point at which Jesus drew a line, and that was when he saw deep injustice being yeah. done in the world. Every single time he saw deep injustice being done in the world, that was where the line was. Yeah. And we know that the poor have been exploited. We know that people of color in our country are suffering. We know that children are in cages. We know, we know, we know, we know. Yeah. And well, we know that um, 
the most powerful man in the world didn't cause all of these things to happen, he fanned the flames of that. Yeah. And so um, as hard as it is for us as, as faith leaders, right, yeah. to take a political stand, um, Jesus was political. Yeah. He got involved when he had to and he got angry um, when people were, were being abused at the hands of yeah. power. And I really do, I saw somebody um, write that this is what the, the end of an abusive relationship looks like. Yeah. And for anyone who's ever been in an abusive relationship, I know people are triggered, <laughs> yeah. right? By the sociopathy and the narcissism um, that's, that's coming really. We, we've been through four years of, of being gaslighted and, and abused and, yeah. and it, it triggers those memories of trauma. Yeah. Um, so we are in a time of societal trauma. And so I guess we're just coming to you to say all, all of the feels, <laughs> everything that you are feeling is, is in God's hands and it's holy and it's held and, um, and we're here for you. Yeah. If you need to talk through those things, we're a phone yeah. call away or a stop by the church with a mask away or um, whatever it is that you need. Um, and we are praying. We're praying for you. We're praying for our country. <clears throat> We are praying for peace. We're praying for light. And, and we know that our God is God of love. So we're praying for love at the center, <laughs> right? Yes. And, yeah. and um, it's a lie that the church should not be involved in politics. Mm. We are called um, as the people of God to live, speak into and live into the world in which God has placed us. Mm -hmm. We have a responsibility um, because we are called to lives of love for and service to others. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, when there is abuse, we have to call it out, speak against it, and do everything in our power to care for those who are abused. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think it's important too that we name the white supremacy that is present yeah. in all of this. Um, that you know there are all sorts of lies out there saying that this violence was caused by Antifa or or fake Trump supporters who are really you know the far left. And I mean the evidence is clear that there is deep, deep, deep racial divide yeah. and white supremacy in this country. Yeah. Um, if you listen to any former neo-Nazis um, who talk about the fact that they've been preparing for this day and they knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Um, we, we know that that evil is present, that when uh, Black Lives Matter protests were gonna happen in DC, those Capitol steps were filled with armed guards. And when white men were storming Washington DC armed with weapons, um, the Capitol was unprepared. Yeah. So we have to call that what it is. And, and we need for, you know, as a white church, to name our, um, our privilege, yeah. to name the way in which um, whiteness has worked on our behalf, um, and to do everything we can to, to help dismantle white supremacy and racism yeah. in our country. So we have candles here. And we want to invite you to, um, if you have a candle in your house, take it out and light it while we light ours. Thank you. And we'll offer a prayer and then a song. We're not going to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Johan and Annika and Julie recorded uh, Christ Be Our Light, which the verses really beautifully speak into. Yeah just a begging for Christ to come into the midst of darkness. So do you yes. want to start the prayer and I'll close? And... Okay. All right. I can do that. <sighs> Gracious and loving God, obviously you are aware of all that uh, has taken place, continues to take place. And we pray in the midst of these fearful and dreadful days 
that you would continue to reassure us of your loving, gracious presence. That you would care for all of those who are struggling with anger or grief or disappointment or whatever those emotions might be. We pray that you would be with um, the leaders of our nation, that you would um, help them to, to be bold as they uh, seek to lead in positive ways. And we pray that you would um, help us as leaders in the church and as uh, members of the church to constantly be asking the question, what is it that you are calling us to do and say, and that we would follow you um, in saying and doing those things that truly do uh, love and care and serve people, especially those who live on the margins, those who are abused, those who are harassed, those for whom life is so difficult. May we be the Christ's light for them. God, we pray for the children, for our children, for parents who are trying to parent children through confusing and dark and conflicted times, that you would give each of us wisdom to teach our children uh, what you meant when, when you say in Scripture that we are called to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. God, call us back to that, to that humility and to mercy and to justice every day. God, we, we beg you to shine your light in the midst of the darkness. We beg you to show us hope through vaccines, through new leadership, through the people stepping up to do the right thing. God, you conquered the world once with your love, and we pray that you would come again. Show us your love, show us your light, show us hope for a future. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shine in your